Hi everybody, I'm Justin Booth and I'm here to show you the hatching brushes for Corel Painter. Uh, there are 15 brushes just like the rest of the packs come with um, and I'm going to go down from the top to the bottom of this list and show you kind of what each one of them does and kind of what what you're getting yourself into. So the first one is circular. Um, this one is really good for just making some simple hatches. You can see how that you can you can cross over each other, you can make this bigger or smaller. One thing I recommend with all of these brushes is to play with the opacity. You can see if I overlap this, it's a bit harsh on itself. Um, but if you turn it down, I just turn it down to the 30% by hitting the 3 on my keyboard. And you can see you can kind of get some lighter hatching done. And you know, it depends on your drawing and, and what you're doing. But this is a this is a good way to get some nice kind of rough from that circular dab there. Uh, the next one is corners. And this one, uh, if you saw my pen, I'm, I'm tilting it. So if you have a, a Wacom pen and it's got tilt sensitivity, this one sprays out your pen um, versus if I just press down, it's still coming out at an angle. Um, so this one is just like it says, it's made of little corners that kind of hatch into each other. And you can make this one also smaller or bigger. And changing the size kind of just changes the range in which they're coming out. I've noticed that the size difference is not too big unless you drastically change the brush. So that's something to take note of for sure. Um, the detail brush, I really like playing with this brush. If you're rendering something and you have that tiny little piece that you just kind of want to add some details, some cracks or stipples to, this one, uh, if I've got a, let's actually use a scratchboard tool to just draw a little circle right here. And I'm going to go back to that detail brush. Uh, if, if I want to make some nice, cool, stipple details in here, I can do that. But if, then if I press down, I, I can kind of make some, some different strokes. And uh, playing with the opacity is going to also help you out with that one. Just some nice little detailed um, <clears throat> little nicks in your in your paper. A lot of times I'm detailing something. I like to use tiny little strokes. Um, so this one is called Dirty. If you're rendering something and you just kind of want that dirty look to it, but you're also kind of, of course, rendering it, which is what hatching is, this is a pretty cool thing to, you know, rub on um, somebody's... I, I have the example image here and I kind of rub this, whoops, kind of rub this on the nose here. And it's just kind of like a nice dirty look. Um, so let's go back to this canvas here and we're going to look at the grass. So this one is similar with another brush uh, that's scatter. I'll show you down here, but it's got a little bit of a curve to it, which is why I call it grass. because It's more of an organic one. And then we have scatter that's more straight. So these two kind of do the same thing. Make that ca nice chaotic. You can make it really big or you can make it small. I guess that's kind of self-explanatory with any brush, but with the hatching brushes, it's just kind of interesting to see the difference in the span of all the tiny strokes. Um, to go back to the next one, I was going to show you. This one's hatch, and this one's just straight. So I think I like this one the most because I can really just be really intentional with this brush, especially when it comes to changing the size. And you can see how I could, I could even render kind of a really whatever I wanted. I can make a door, you know, just by kind of punching away at this. And it just is almost abstract unless you have line art that you're probably starting with. Um, and then this is a nice little pen. If you just kind of want to fix something up really simple over in the corner, but you also want it to do well at hatching, this one just kind of doubles up on itself with some velocity. It's kind of nice. Hatching is all about calligraphy. So each of these, for your benefit, the calligraphy changes to something interesting that you couldn't just do very simply with a, a line, a typical one pixel line, unless you put that effort into it. Um, the pointed brush, I, I like this one because it starts out broad and you can make some cool effects, especially again, changing through your opacity. I'm going to 40% here. I'm not being very careful with my stroke because I'm also talking 
if I were to sit here and have kind of a deep moment with these, I'm really interested in what I'm going to come up with. But you can see how this can get really cool. Um, make some cool calligraphy there. Uh, pressured is going to be also similar to circular, but it's it's got only a few strokes, and then it's for kind of loose renderings of things. I think this is really useful if you're trying to stay wispy with your work. Uh, I kind of tend to do that. I'm a very low opacity, subtle um, uh, sketcher, and so this is kind of nice for if you're if you're going in for kind of the um, cool uh, artistic effects while also rendering something. Um, scatter we talked about, similar to grass but straight, and so I don't know, there's something about those lines crossing when they're super straight that's very mathematical yet loose. Scribbles is fun. Uh, this one is cool on a, a big canvas as well as a small canvas I have here for so you can really see the stroke up close. Uh, if I make this really big, you can see this kind of gets really chaotic fast. If I make it small, it's chaotic but within a controlled range. So you can do a lot of interesting things with this, but uh, to render on something like uh, a log or, um, uh, oh, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, uh, but different textures. This one is interesting for and just kind of, you know, makes your process interesting, uh, as well as shakes. Shakes is also like that. Uh, I recommend making this one uh, big and doing kind of the same thing I was recommending with the scribbles on maybe a bigger canvas. Um, the opacity is definitely going to come in hand, handy with this one because that's kind of a bold scribble. Um, speedy is kind of nice. It's similar to corners, but it look, kind of looks like you rushed. It kind of reminds me of resume paper. So does corners, but this one has kind of got those little, those little fuzzy things that are in the paper. And uh, I like to play with the opacity on this. Um, I kind of, when I was playing around with this, I kind of liked it. Uh, for the same reasons that texture comes in handy, but it can be more intentional. Texture is something you just put over your canvas. It's not really rendering anything. It's too light to render, and it's just kind of to add some some kind of darkness to your page. It's kind of nice to do that sometimes. I like to add noise sometimes to my illustrations when I'm done, and this is kind of just a cool way to intentionally add it in some places, but also under the uh, subject or intention of hatching. So it's pretty neat. And then the last one, of course not least, as we always say, is wiggles. And this one is cool to make big strokes and little strokes just like everything else. But this one, if you make it big, you can really see where that hatching comes in. Um, one recommendation I'll make with these brushes, especially if you've got the full version or particle shop, um, that you can play with is if you make these strokes on a new layer and let's say that I've got let's draw my coffee cup here not gonna be anything I got a huge Cintiq tablet I'm still kinda getting used to and I'm gonna take that last brush and let's make these strokes on their own line you can do some interesting stuff with this and then what you can do is you can take your eraser and back out. That's a uh, kind of one good w way to do it with these brushes that are kind of chaotic. It's hard to control the ends of them, but you want to render something cool and you want to use that expressive stroke. And so you can see how that I could take any of these brushes. Um, let's take another one just for fun. Let's take corners. Okay, let's throw some of my little brush friends under here and under here uh, this is like more like just making chaos and I guess controlled hatching at this point but I really want to show you kind of some cool kind of effect that you can have well, what am I doing I don't even know let's make that scribble line cool all right neato uh, and then once I back out of that you're kind of left with just in the image uh, there are some other ways you could do that. I know some of you use like masking layers and stuff, and I've never really understood all that. It 
It's like it's one of those things that's so easy it's complicated. But anyways, that is the full pack for uh, the full version of Painter and Particle Shop. Um, and I'm really uh, hopeful to see if anybody makes anything interesting with these. Um, as an ink connoisseur myself, uh, I'm really passionate about these things like hatching. Um, so uh, please share your work and I would love to see it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching.